So here's a short update video with things I'm currently working on. Don't expect terribly high quality as I'm just running around with my phone at this point, but I have a lot of exciting things to share with you guys. So right now I'm inside the tank section at the bow. This is where the old aluminum tank used to sit and as you can see, there is a closed section of the hull right from here all the way to the engine room, 3 meter 39 away from here, that I am planning to open up with a small entry and a ladder right at the engine room so that we can have sleeping quarters inside the hull here. It's currently foam filled, which is very nice as life insurance, <laughs> but in order to spend a significant amount of time here with my wife plus one, two or three children. Um, this will be necessary in terms of space. Um, the standing height or standing height down here is only one meter 35, which means I have to get creative about the use of space back there. Basically, at the space where the ladder will go down. I'm planning to keep that open so that nobody accidentally puts something at the entranceway and traps somebody inside anyway. But also the first 60 centimeters um, after the entryway um, is where the kitchen is gonna be on top. So the lower cabinet of a kitchen will actually be fake and hollow from the inside to allow headspace um, down there. So that will give us about two meter 10 standing height um, down in the hull. And in the front here, where the bed is gonna be, you don't need to be able to stand. So there it can be the one meter 35, which is still more than you would have in a typical camper. So this is what the cable situation currently looks like. We have, this is my uh, camera that I used to reverse engineer all the stuff on the boat here that isn't accessible. Um, this is just a Bowden tube that is still remaining from the old system but doesn't do anything right now. Then you have the hydraulics that go straight to the rudder and these two placeholder ropes that I'm using to pull cables through from the engine room all the way to the helm. So that's where I've just been. Here's the engine room. And as you can see, this is where the hydraulics tubes and the placeholder ropes come out. This, by the way, is the current state of things. So almost all the equipment in here, bilge pumps, everything is removed. Most of it is scraped down or sanded so that I can uh, use the opportunity of having a completely empty engine room to repaint everything. Problem was that a lot of the paint was applied while there was still some oil or water residue on the ground. So it was flaking off and I didn't really like the idea of starting fresh with a boat that still has flaky paint in it. So that's what I'm currently doing. This part is still missing. Everything else is basically done. So, a couple layers of, co uh, a couple coats of paint here, and it'll be like new. The new Nissan engine will probably be mounted only on this part up to here. It's pretty small, it's only 75 kilograms as well, compared to the almost one ton for the Yanmar engines, which will leave 
all this space back here, starting from here and back for batteries and such. One thing that still annoys me a bit is the center hull bilge. Because the center hull is pretty long, but this is the only bilge access. You've got about 69 centimeters going in on that side, about 30 centimeters or a little more going in on the other side. But other than that, it's only a tiny tube com uh, connecting compartments all the way up to the front with no other means of access. So I'm still not firmly decided on whether I want to leave it that way. Just flush it out once and hope there isn't anything bigger sticking in there or actually create one or two more access points up front. Another tricky section is down here. So basically the engine room section ends right there. So that's about this far, which means around one meter 50 here is foam filled and not accessible, which would be fine. But in addition to that, <laughs> There is about 10 centimeters of room in between the foam filled compartment down there and the deck, which can only be accessed through the screw holes where the benches used to be mounted, which is annoying because not only can I not use that space, it's also not used with buoyancy foam, so it doesn't give me any advantage. And there's no way to access it to clean out whatever fell in between. And to close these holes will just basically seal off the, apartment, uh, seal off the compartment <laughs> and then that's going to be it. Don't really have a good solution because I don't want to cut a new hatch. This is where the bed will be anyway, um, just to access these 10 centimeters. Maybe I can foam fill it without opening too much, but I'm not sure about that yet. So generally the next couple of big tasks will be finding a solution for a walk around deck, uh, basically similar to what this guy has here, because otherwise docking will be a nightmare. So adding about 30 centimeters of deck to the side in some sort of form, which is gonna be a major task. And then, as I've mentioned earlier, cutting a big hole here that will give access to the hull. So this compartment basically seals off half the height of the hull. It's gonna, I'm gonna get rid of that need some stiffening because I'm cutting out these uh, strengthening tubes back there um, so that we have access to the hull down here. Then this part will be left open basically up to about here, um, which will go underneath a fake kitchen cabinet up to window height approximately. And that's going to be a, a fairly major undertaking already. Still not completely decided on the window issue. I've consulted a lot of people and it seems like there is no way of saving them in any uh, realistic way. So it'll come down to cutting new windows. Oh, and then there's this guy the custom-made huge hatch that I'm planning to put there. So that's going to be the back exit towards another major project, a swim platform that will be added here because otherwise we will have zero outside space for sunbathing or sitting outside on a good day 
since the whole roof will be fully covered with solar panels by then. So I think that's it from my side for today. It's a quick update and the video quality isn't great. The audio quality probably also isn't great. But since I've received a lot of messages and comments of people asking for more content and some updates, I thought this is a good alternative to waiting for a couple more weeks or months until I can actually do a high quality walkthrough. So I hope you guys liked that. I'm sorry for video and audio quality and please subscribe, leave down some comments um, about things that you want me to uh, film next time and make sure to also check out the Instagram channel which I'll link in the description below. Thanks a lot and see you next time.